to be again traveling later on tonight could be again just a bit of a problem out there for right now and we could see again the potential for some more uh, rainfall into the mid-south for the time being hopefully everybody can hear uh, for the time being out there for we see for right now again getting some more uh, audio gain at this point in time we've had to switch microphones out unfortunately because we have again some very uh, quiet conditions and a broken microphone if you watched yesterday's uh, live weather you know that there was a little bit of some technical difficulties and thanks to uh, Michael Gates for helping out on that our audio operator extraordinaire back in the booth again if you're just joining us this is a special edition of News Channel 3's video weather blog weather overtime we are live on Facebook on our WRA G page. We are live on my personal Facebook page as well and over on my iPad, at least I hope it's still working right across the studio, we should be live on Periscope and Twitter. Why are we doing all this? Because this is a special evening. It only happens once a year and it's called Earth Hour. If you've never heard about this before, it's an event that started several years ago, about 10 years ago, for the opportunity to start awareness about energy conservation. And if you'd like to know more about this, stick around. We'll talk more about it. But in the meantime, get prepared to again hopefully save yourself a little bit of money conserve a little bit of energy and also again help the planet out at the same time so stay tuned for more on that drop your locations and your weather reports into the comments section we'll talk about that a little hazy but otherwise mostly clear view from Old Miss campus from the Crosby Hall cam looking back toward the student union still under construction but it looks like things are wrapping up there decently quietly for right now downtown Memphis again getting some more clouds in here as we watch some thunderstorms into and around the area back to the north north of us and we'll be watching those throughout the course of the rest of the evening. We haven't had any severe weather in the Mid-South at this point. We do have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings just right over north of I-40 around Gibson County, uh, upwards of again northwest Tennessee, but nothing directly in the Mid-South. And those thunderstorms again starting to refire a little bit as they get closer to the Tennessee River for tonight. So we are looking again at some more rumbles of thunder possible into the Mid-South for later on. But a lot of what we're looking at right now is going to be staying well back to our north. This is all along a cold front, which is dropping into the area, which is going to be giving us, again, some rumbles of thunder and some gusty winds at times. There could be, again, some, say, about penny, maybe dime-sized hail mixed in with this. So, again, that's where the severe weather threat is for right now. As this front drops on through, winds are out of the southwest ahead of this. They'll be turning out of the northwest right there. You can kind of see the gust front taking place right into around Tipton and Lauderdale County. That line right there is our cold front starting to make its way the leading edge of that colder air dropping into the Mid-South. And you can even see right behind that more showers developing in the lee of that toward Blytheville and between there and Dyersburg. So we will be looking for more chances of these showers and thunderstorms out there across the area throughout the rest of the evening. Now, once again, we don't have any severe weather here. We do still have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for the area in and around uh, just north of Darden and I-40. Again, that'll continue until about 8.45 p.m. tonight. So that's got about another uh, three minutes before that expires. And that's just outside the new Channel 3 viewing area. Uh, Geraldine Marble snowing in Indy. Yeah, the first time in four years that Indianapolis has had a winter storm warning. That's something to go that long between anything like that at this point in time. Teresa Esther, heavy rain, lightning and thunder around Huntington. Sounds pretty good though. Josh Brown, glad to see you're loving the weather uh, as well. Anita Avery Coleman checking in from Batesville, Mississippi. Jen Hendricks Cobb, 64 in Bells. Thanks a lot for watching for tonight. And Katie Slaughter Rutten. Burr. Hope I'm saying that right from Dyersburg. Thanks for joining us. Live real-time weather showing again breezy conditions out there. Winds out of the southwest at about 23 miles per hour up around Blytheville at the airport. North at 20, the front making its way through Dyersburg. Much cooler there back in the lower 60s and winds out of the southwest ahead of that front as it makes its way into the area. Running the numbers into tonight, that cold front again right through here starts to slice its way through the area. Notice the wind arrows here making their way out of the southwest and up to the north of that front. Winds coming in from out of the north. So we'll be seeing the wind switching around throughout the rest of the evening and then going toward the north into tomorrow, which means by the time you're watching News Channel 3 Daybreak starting at about 6 a.m., Mix of clouds and clear skies, but we may see again a little bit less in the way of rainfall as a lot of this dry air swooping on through here 
kicks that rainfall on out of here back to the east, so there's not that much left of it at this point. Getting into the rest of Palm Sunday, again, quiet and dry, so any outdoor church services tomorrow for Palm Sunday looks pretty good for right now, but as we go into tomorrow night, that's where we start to see the rain making its way a little bit closer to us back into around southwestern parts of Arkansas, and then as we go toward Monday morning, Right about the time you're getting ready for work or school, or maybe some of you taking spring break off, we look at more chances of showers and thunderstorms back in the Mid-South area, and that could make for some sloppy travel. And it looks like this is going to be around right on in through, again, the evening hours, finally beginning to dwindle a bit by about Tuesday or so, but most of that, again, should be around Monday afternoon and finally getting its way out of the area uh, for right now. Palmer Densford doing an early Easter tomorrow. Will kids be able to egg hunt? Uh, looks pretty good for right now. Again, the, tomorrow doesn't look like too much of a problem unless it's going to be uh, in the evening. The longer you go through Sunday, the more chances you're going to have for rain out there, and that's going to be the main thing for tomorrow. So Easter egg hunts should be okay. Now, the Storm Prediction Center early Earlier tonight was showing a marginal threat, the lowest threat of severe weather between roughly Paducah and I-40. They have removed that from the Mid-South at this point, so the threat for severe weather appears to have come to an end, and that, again, looks to be very good news, again, for the rest of the area. Melissa Moon joining us on our WREG page. Everybody say hello to Melissa checking in for this evening, and everybody checking in on my Facebook page as well. Nice from Coldwater, Mississippi, and Martha Burton, thank you very much uh, for checking in there. Here's the big story for later on this next week. We could see the possibility possibility of more rain showers out there, especially as we go into Wednesday, Thursday, and very early on Friday. Now, the Storm Prediction Center, the Weather Prediction Center, has walked back the totals a little bit. Earlier today, we were looking at maybe about six to seven inches of rain around southwest Tennessee and northern Mississippi. It appears that we are not seeing this in this point in time, so we don't see a lot of major problems uh, for heavier amounts of rainfall than that, but this forecast could definitely fluctuate over the next couple of days. So definitely want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3 as we may see rivers and streams on their way back upwards once again into the area right there. Uh, Ruth Wilhoyt Rogel, what about Decaturville on the Tennessee River? You'll see some showers and thunderstorms late tomorrow night into Monday as well, so prepare for more of that coming back your direction uh, into and around the area. Could be something to look at there. Welcome to everybody who's checking in for this evening. Rock Hill, South Carolina, Wesley Carter, welcome to the show. Uh, Peggy Jones saying hello back there, and everybody else uh, who's checking on in for this evening. Thanks a lot for joining us. Running the numbers through Palm Sunday. Temperatures a little bit cooler tomorrow thanks to that wind coming in out of the north back to about the lower 60s. 70s by the time we hit about Monday with some showers and thunderstorms. Hopefully clearing out a bit on Tuesday, but in between the sunshine we'll be seeing some more showers and some thunderstorms out there getting into the rest of the next several days. Now again, Tuesday night, Wednesday through Thursday, and maybe through about Friday morning, that's where we may see the potential for some more rainfall coming up into parts of the Mid-South area. That's where we see, again, that potential that could bring in some flooding to the Mid-South once again. So we'll be watching that, again, very carefully over the next several days. And as an added bonus, looking back toward Easter Sunday, things are looking good for the most part. This morning, no clouds, sunshine. We've thrown a few clouds in, and unfortunately, we've had to put some more chances of showers back into the forecast. So we'll watch that. Hopefully not a problem for the outdoor sunrise services and for the churches and uh, worship centers who are asking us about the forecast again for that opportunity to worship outside on Easter Sunday. So far, it's looking okay, but again, things can change between here and there, so definitely want to keep it tuned uh, to News Channel 3 for more information on that. Cordova, Tabrina Wilson, welcome to the show. Peanut Short from Dyer, Tennessee, thank you very much. And William Hurt Lunsford, welcome to the show on our Facebook page as well. Janice Williams from Lamar, Mississippi out there. All right, special event for tonight. And something that you can participate in at 8.30 tonight, local time, it became what is known as Earth Hour. This is an hour dedicated to the idea of conserving natural resources, not using as much energy, and just maybe saving you a little bit more in the way of your pocketbook when it comes to the utilities 
and also to the environment. This is the fourth year in a row that I've gone around the station to turn off any unused lights. Now, we didn't go into anybody's office. We didn't go into the bathrooms. We didn't, uh, again, turn off any security lights or anything like that. It's not about totally shutting things down. What Earth Hour is all about is about you being able to turn off those lights and stop wasting the energy that you can easily get away with. As Americans, sometimes it's very much easy for some people out there to walk out of a room and not turn the light off because it's just too much effort or whatever the reason is. Maybe you don't want to turn the light on the next time around you go in the room. Well, that is costing you money. The more you leave it on, the more energy it takes and the more it costs. And that right there is something that Earth Hour is all about. Now, in 2015, when I started this, I turned off around the studio and around the building 221 lights. Now, not light switches, but just lights. And that really went up back in 2016 to about 334. And then last year, it went down to about 167. And again, we're talking about the lights in the ceiling. We're talking about everything. We're talking about flood lamps. We're talking about LEDs. We're talking about incandescence, everything. But if it takes energy and it comes out of our uh, electrical system and we could turn it off, I did so to make certain, just to prove a point, that this is what is typically left on in our offices, and that's what can do a very good job of costing us money out there. This year, just a little bit less than an hour ago, I went around, and it wasn't quite as good as, again, uh, last year, but at least it was a little better than the last couple of years. I turned off 199 lights. Now, how much did that cost? In 2016, that was running well over $11,000 a year that it cost us to leave those particular lights on 24-7, 365. If you would like to participate in this, now's the time to do it. If you have appliances you're not using that draw the energy out, that use energy all the time for those LED lights or anything else, now's the time to turn those things off and practice that, and that could really help your pocketbook out in the end. You say that doesn't make a difference? Take a look at this. You use the lights for an entire week, from Sunday midnight to Sunday midnight, and it caught, takes, that's about 168 hours per week that the lights or whatever you're using is left on. That's energy you're using, energy you are paying for. If you turn those things off, if you run a business and you only have some things on during the week, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., that's only 60 hours on, that's less than a, about 100 hours over, turning those things off that you could save that's almost by two-thirds the amount of energy cost that you could save by just turning those things off. Now, once again, I'm not talking about shutting things down permanently, turning off security lights for safety's sake. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about the energy that we typically use that is just available to us just because it can be. So again, something that you can see out here that if you want to participate in this, now's the time to do it. It's 8.30 p.m. right around Saturday night, March 24th. This is the time to start practicing energy conservation. Now, how much did it actually cost us for this year? Well, if you want to know more about that, I'll be posting that to my social media pages coming up here within the next hour. Got a video ready to go showing you what we did and more importantly, how much it cost us. And this is something that can really help you out and your utility bill in the long run. You may think that a light on every single day, every single year, doesn't really, again, cost all that much or causes that much of a problem. If 300 million of us recycled one aluminum can per day, we would not have an aluminum shortage. It would work out very easily if we could actually recycle all that. Likewise, if we turned off the lights that we didn't need all the time, that's something to participate in, and that's what Earth Hour is, again, all about. So that's something to think about right there. Todd Demers will be in in the morning to lead you through a daybreak to give you an idea as to what's going on with the rest of the weekend. This is the first weekend of spring 2018, so things are looking very nice for right now. Todd will have that update coming up bright and early in the morning. And, of course, I'll have a lot more coming up tomorrow evening. Thank you very much for joining us. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. would love to hear what you have to say. If you have suggestions, if you have ideas about what we can feature on here, complaints if you absolutely must. But, again, we'll go through everything that gets sent to us. And if there's something on here we can feature, again, like Earth Hour and things like that, we'd love to know more about it. So just give me an email shout, and we'll do what we can on that. We'll have a complete update of the forecast coming up. Mike Sadie, as, usually, as usual, has a busy day in sports. Kristen Holloway has all the day's news. And, of course, yours truly will have your forecast update, and that'll be tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Wes Warner, yes, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Thank you very much. One of my friends from Topeka West 
High School checking in on Facebook for tonight. Thank you very much. Shelton Jacobs as well. Thank you very much for checking in on the Facebook page. We'll have more details again through the rest of the weekend, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a special Earth Hour edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, and thanks for joining us tonight. Stay tuned throughout the rest of the weekend for more.